In an emergency situation, people will automatically go for what the first needs are. People are hungry, people are thirsty, people need clothing, people need shelter. It took me a few months of being in Calais to really see that just as important, if not more, I think so, is the access to information. Since the revolution of the internet, access to the internet is the main thing that provides that. There was a chronic lack of information in the jungle. First and foremost, that nobody can access the internet is outrageous. The fact that nobody has Wi-Fi is shocking. I think everybody that uses the internet regularly knows when you live in a safe country on a day-to-day -day basis how important Wi-Fi is to you. So when you're in distress, it's even more important. <laughs> I have to explain the migrant, why we have a migrant crisis. Explain no. the migrant crisis once. Migrant crisis. The world is changing and people are scared. Tech Refugees coordinates the tech community's answer to the refugee needs. So the point of Tech Refugees is to promote the good solutions and scale them. So if we can create a solution in some place and have it used in another place by another NGO, we want to be that link. But as a team, we don't go on the ground much because we're not trying to say we are building the technology. We are coordinating that tech community building stuff. And I'm not one to find family. The other side of the world often They've not spoken to them for months, sometimes they don't even know that We created the info bus here in Calais because there was a need. It's just a matter of putting it together and doing it. It's fairly simple. It's all the, the apparatus we have to give people access to the internet is all um, common stuff that you can buy quite easily on the internet. It's essentially a mobile office space which has its own contained power, its own Wi-Fi. It can operate in any situation. From that, we can offer people the Wi-Fi setup, which essentially is taking mobile data, taking the signal in, and then we re-emit that signal back out into a, a localised area around the, the info bus. So basically we're taking that, that signal and splitting it up so many people can use it as a hotspot. People can use the internet, they can find out uh, what laws are in place that apply to them, what are their rights, where is best for them to go. But also on a day-to-day -day basis, just talking with their families and loved ones on the other side of the world. There's some of us that can come here and do this stuff in the field and there's other people that have the expertise to support that who are based in other places. And most of the time, it's trying to get through the day. If you see the condition in Calais, just, just go there and understand the challenge that every day repeating the operation, putting the Wi-Fi on and fixing the Wi-Fi and having, a again, another problem and then having the police destroy everything. We wouldn't have been able to do any of it without collaboration. We don't have access to millions of pounds or thousands of pounds to help us with our projects. So they don't have the time to breathe think creatively, think big solutions and, and, and go to London to pitch for a, with a, a very nice deck and to, I want to get money for my project. So being able to collaborate with people in the UK who are fundraising has been incredible. Being able to collaborate with people who have experience in collecting data has been incredible. 
I think uh, collaboration between organizations is very, very important. For example, if you look at Refugee Rights Data Project and the Refugee Info Buzz, both these organizations are not even one year old. So they're very young, underfunded, volunteer-driven uh, organizations. So only through collaborations are we able to be stronger. Refugee Rights Data Project have the um, the, the know-how to collect data and to show more people what's going on here. The key part of this is that it's live data collection. So whenever these tablets come back to the bus and connect to the Wi-Fi, the data collected goes automatically to Refugee Rights Data Project HQ. So they're processing it as it's being gathered. The presence of the info bus enables us to collect real-time data. And I think that's essential in such a volatile and fast based movement. There are evictions, there are demolitions. It's, uh, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Because you can see refugees, NGOs, engineers all together. So this is why TechFuji is here, is we want to do the work that they can't do so that they can concentrate on getting the work done on the ground. <laughs> Hello. So what are the priorities for you for Infobus in the next few months? The, the system we have now will work to a point, but I think we're going to have to have maybe three systems that will work depending on the, the place and situation. We can bring them visibility. We can probably bring them fundraising from, uh, donations. But more importantly, we can bring the tech community to provide a hand So I want to have a fleet of different info buses in Europe and beyond. Next it's not that people are evil, it's not that people lack humanity. I think people lack information. And that information is vital for the world to be a better place.